His last words to me were, Mom, I'm okay. Please go to sleep. Josh was my miracle child. I've always wanted to be a mother. And when he came along, it was like an answered prayer for me. Growing up, I was always joking around and he liked to make movies, would carry his movie cam all around and he was always making me laugh. The day after, I felt very, very lost. I was in total shock. I couldn't believe that he had actually done it. First of all, you have to deal with the funeral. You have to deal with the cremation. That is very, very traumatic because it's unprecedented. I was never angry with him because he left me suicide notes. He kept saying he was sorry and that it was not my fault but he just kept saying that he needed to end the pain. It was too unbe unbearable for him. For the first three months, I was just totally grieving. I started counting the days. Today is the second day, third day, fourth day, and then, oh, it's the first week. And then it goes on to the second week. From the weeks, it goes to months, and then goes to years. One of the things that helped me was meeting up face-to-face -face with Josh's friends and finding out from them what Josh was like when he was with them in school and in their outings. In a way, being with his friends also was like him sitting together with us. And sometimes it felt like I was sitting in his place. I guess for suicide loss survivors, it's that, that wanting to hold on, you know. Like for me, even keeping his pillow and just his smell, because you realise that that's all you have of him on earth. That's all. So you just cling on to everything is available. Five years on, I'm grieving and living. I reached a point where I said, I don't want to just continue to grieve and merely exist. I will always be grieving for Josh because I lost him. But I can start living. And that to me is having a sense of purpose and hope. It's really the emotional support that I found, you know, was very lacking. It's the lacking of saying the right things. It's the lacking of knowing what is the best thing to do. But in order to know what's the best thing to do, you must understand suicide. Suicide loss is different from losing someone to a sickness, murder or an accident, right? Because there's the element of blame and shame. You know, it leads to a lot of condemnation. When someone has just lost a loved one and the grieving journey has started, sometimes you just, um, you just show up and shut up. Just your presence is good enough. Your presence shows that you care and love the person who is going through that grief. But when suicide loss survivors are more open to talking about their children who, whom they have lost, if you just avoid it, they don't get the support. They, they tend to then say, OK, I will isolate myself because nobody understands what I'm going through. Sometimes in my family settings, you reach a point where you say, hey, oh yeah, Josh also liked Durant's, right? And then, and, and that's your attempt to, to want to talk to you about your, your child, right? Because your child lived. It's not like he never existed, 
but suddenly the conversation just stops and you know it moves on to something else so you sense that hey you know they're trying to avoid it and that makes me feel rather isolated I had checked on him before I went to bed. I asked him, I said, Josh, are you okay? His last words to me were, Mom, I'm okay. Please go to sleep. What would you say to him if you could see him again? What I would say to him? I'll just, I'll just hug him real tight. I think there were no words I can say to this, to actually express how I would feel if it ever comes to that moment where I see him again.